let's look at the drugs used in bronchial asthma now. Now asthma is a chronic or episodic condition which causes severe bronchospasm, mucosal edema and increased bronchial mucus secretion. Now asthma occurs due to a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction which is localized. It is also known as ATOP because this is genetic and the patient has a genetic tendency to develop allergies. It can also be acquired. Now bronchial asthma causes the airway to, to become compromised resulting in coughing, shortness of breath and wheezing. Now what triggers asthma can be different from one patient to the other and mainly uh, includes three things. It can be an environmental factor such as uh, environmental allergens or irritants such as dust, mold spores, pet dander, cockroach waste, cigarette smoke etc. They can be infectious agents such as bacteria or viruses. They can be psychological or emotional factors. So remember not to be stressed for pharma because it can lead to an asthma attack that is if you are an asthmatic. If not, mm, well I'd still recommend not to be stressed because it will get you nowhere. Let's see the mechanism of an asthma attack. There are mainly three reactions that occurs. Firstly, there can be bronchospasm due to the bronchial smooth muscle contraction which constricts the airways of course. It is also known as bronchial hyper, hyper responsiveness. Secondly, thickening of the inner lining by edema, edematous swelling due to the inflammatory condition, mainly due to release of inflammatory mediators from mast cells such as histamine, serotonin, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, etc. Increased secretion of, uh, from bronchioles because they are irritated by an irritant that causes increased secretion. Now, asthma can be of two types. One can be genetic or second is acquired. The genetic asthma usually manifests early in life, that is below 12 years of age, while acquired asthma can uh, show up later, later in the life. The types of asthma include acute, chronic and status asthmaticus. The acute form is characterized by episodes of dyspnea with expiratory wheezing. Why? Because it's an obstructive pulmonary disease causing wheezing. The chronic is, uh, has a continuous wheeze or, and or on exertion there is breathlessness, cough and mucoid sputum. It can also lead to recurrent infections and hyperplasia and hypertrophy of smooth muscles. The status, status asthmaticus is that when an attack of asthma is prolonged than 30 to 60 minutes, this is a life-threatening condition and, can, and the patient can die of hypoxemia if not treated quickly. Now let's come to the drugs which are used in asthma management. We use the word management because of course asthma uh, cannot be treated completely because it might be genetic or acquired. We cannot remove all the allergens from the environment. So basically we use five approaches to treatment. First approach is to dilate the bronchioles. bronchioles. We use bronchodilators for that. Secondly, we can use leukotriene receptor antagonists or lipoxygenase inhibitors. Thirdly, we can use mast cell stabilizers, glucocorticoids, both systemic and inhalational, and anti-IgE monoclonal antibodies. Now the first approach that is to dilate the bron bronchioles, we have further three approaches. One, we can use beta-2 agonists to act on the beta-2 receptors on the smooth muscles of uh, bronchioles, causing it to dilate. Methyl xanthines can be used and anticholinergists can also be used. Now, beta-2 agonists are basically our first line of drugs in the management of asthma. We, we use the drugs such as salbutamol, terbutaline. They are used for the acute attack management because they have a rapid onset while long-acting salmeterol, formoterol are used for prophylaxis. Bambuterol is a prodrug 
which is converted into terbutaline upon administration and it is also used uh, due to its long half-life. Now, remember we can use adrenaline too, but I guess you remember that adrenaline acts on all the alpha and beta receptors. So, if such a drug is used for asthma, we'll see all the side effects like tremor, tachycardia, palpitations, hypokalemia, cardiac arrhythmias, etc. So, we avoid it and basically save this drug for cases which do not respond to the conventional beta 2 agonist that we use. Beta 2 agonists can be used in acute and prophylaxis. Their longer acting, for example, uh, selmeterol can prevent nighttime attacks. They are given as aerosols to prevent the systemic toxicity. Beta 2 agonists also decrease the release of uh, inflammatory mediators like histamine, leukotriene C4 and D4, etc. So they have two effects. So what we learn from this is that we use beta-2 agonists in acute attacks. Now let's see what methyl xanthines would do. First thing I need you to remember about methyl xanthines is that they are not safe. I'll explain in a while. The mechanism of action is that they inhibit phosphodiesterase enzyme. We know that phosphodiesterase enzyme is involved in the second messenger systems so, and it degrades cyclic AMP. So when it is inhibited, there is increased, uh, increased cyclic AMP. Now you might say, well, when we were studying the beta-1 beta one pharmacology in the heart, they also caused increased cyclic AMP, but that causes increased contractility in the uh, cardiac muscle. So I need you to understand that there are different signal transduction pathways in the cardiac muscle and in the smooth muscle. In the smooth muscle, when there is increased cyclic AMP, what happens is that increased cyclic AMP inhibits the myosin light chain kinase which is the enzyme that is responsible for the phosphorylation of smooth muscle myosin to cause contractions. Second effect of methyl xanthines is that they inhibit the release of histamine and slow reacting substance of anaphylaxis from mast cells. They also improve the mucociliary clearance. Now remember the thing I said about their uh, decreased margin of safety? Well that was because they are competitive antagonists of uh, adenosine. Now if you remember what adenosine does, it is basically an inhibitory neuro, uh, not neurotransmitter. It acts on inhibitory G protein receptors and basically depresses the cardiac muscle by decreasing the cyclic AMP. Now if you can imagine that the uh, methyl xanthines are adenosine antagonists and adenosine depresses cardiac muscle, so they will cause the excitation of course leading to tachycardia, palpitations, hypotension, why because they cause smooth muscle relaxation uh, that's, that is relaxing the um, arterioles and causing hypotension and we know whenever there is hypotension the body tries to combat that and causes reflex tachycardia which can lead to cardiac arrhythmias. Its use has declined because of its uh, narrow margin of safety. It also causes GI irritation Important drug interactions are inducers uh, will affect their metabolism and decrease their effect while enzyme inhibitors will increase their effect by not uh, letting the enzyme metabolize them. Food decreases their absorption. They also cross the blood-brain barrier and the placenta. Now let's see what anticholinergics do in asthma. Ipratropium bromide and tiotropium bromide are basically the anticholinergics used. What they do is that they block the effects of M3 receptor of the bronchial smooth muscle which is responsible for the bronchiospasm. They are used via inhalation and in patients who have a cardiac disease and they are using beta blockers for that, they should not be using beta 2 agonists for asthma, they should be using anti-muscarinic agents because they are safer. They have atropine like side effects. And they can be used in acute to severe asthma combined with beta agonists. They have a slow onset of action. Now coming to the leukotriene receptor antagonists and lipoxygenase inhibitors. We know that le leukotrienes are involved in inflammation. So their antagonists are used in asthma management. What they do is they competitively block the leukotriene receptor ag 
receptors on smooth muscles causing dilation and they also inhibit they can uh, they can also inhibit lipoxygenase enzymes which cause the formation of leukotriene C4 and D4 now the drugs used as leukotriene receptor antagonists are zephyr leucast and montelukast they are highly protein bound and they can be used for prophylaxis also for moderate and acute asthma xylitol has uh, a side effect that it is hepatotoxic zephyrleucost can cause skin rashes and eosinophilia now let's see what mast cell stabilizers do sodium chromoglycate and ketotifen are the mast cell stabilizers used what they do is that they decrease the they inhibit the release of mediators they have a slow onset they do not do anything to stop the antigen antibody reaction but they stabilize the mast cell cell membrane and do not allow them to release the mediators now one thing to remember about sodium chromoglycate is that it should be given by inhalation because it is poorly absorbed from the gut a side effect of uh, these mast cell stabilizers or spe specifically sodium chromoglycate is that it can trigger an asthma attack now if we are using them in asthma management and what it is doing is triggering an asthma attack because it is an irritant and causes bronchospasm so that doesn't make it very useful although it can find its use in seasonal allergies such as rhinitis hay fever etc because they have uh, histamine pharmacology next are the glucocorticoids now they can be used uh, by inhalation and as well as systemically inhalation decreases the side effects while systemic have severe side effects though we save the systemic uh, administration for severe asthma cases what they do is that they inhibit phospholipase A2 which in turn inhibits the release of prostaglandins thromboxane A2 or slow re uh, slow reacting substances of anaphylaxis they, they have anti allergic anti inflammatory and immunosuppressant actions leading to decreased bronchial hyperactivity decreased edema and decreased inflammatory response now you may or may not recall from physiology about cortisol that is the stress hormone it is a glucocorticoid actually what is what it does is that it has a permissive action on beta 2 receptors now without cortisol what happens is that the beta receptors desensitize very very quickly so the fight flight or fright response is not uh, mediated properly so what we do we use combinations of uh, long lasting beta 2 agonists and glucocorticoids to prevent this desensitization and use the beta agonists safely and with efficacy now the systemically used glucocorticoids they should not be used actually they have a lot of side effects such as hoarseness of voice candidiasis uh thrush or th or thrush it is also associated with dysphonia but they are mainly preserved for cases of severe asthma that cannot be managed with other drugs lastly we have the anti ige monoclonal antibodies which is mainly omalizumab i don't know what sort of name is that but we compromise with a lot of things ek aur sahi what it does is that it neutralizes the ige antibody and prevent the degranulation of uh, mast cells it doesn't have effect of uh, it is doesn't have any effect on the binding that has already occurred so it should be used in prophylaxis it can be used in other allergies too and should be given about above 12 years of age the side effects are redness stinging itching and induration that's all Do not stress keep studying and that's it bye